Hello, Bethel friends and family. Pastor Joe here. I hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday. Uh, yes, this is a rerun or a redo of the earlier Bible study today. Uh, I do apologize if you tried to watch the earlier Bible study. Um, I had updated some software and it turned off my microphone, which may have been a benefit and a blessing. Uh, but here we go. It is Wednesday. It's time for a Bible study. And so I was watching uh, the news the other morning and they were talking about Thanksgiving and how not to overeat. Now, I know I should not start with this at all, but it said that when you get up on Wednesday morning, don't uh, skip breakfast that you need to eat and then uh, eat a small meal and then at lunchtime, eat another small meal. Now, what are they talking about? And then there's probably four snacks in between all that, and then eat a light dinner. Well, it was just talking about being healthy in the way we eat. And yes, Thanksgiving is a time. It's really hard to be healthy in the way we eat, but we need to feed properly. Maybe I should say we need to eat properly, but the thought I had is that we need to feed on God's Word properly. Now, tomorrow, we're going to feast, right? We're going to eat a lot. And so maybe today, and I know it's late, so you probably won't get to this till sometime later, but we need to feed on God's Word. The Bible says man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds forth from the mouth of God. Listen, God wants to speak to us and he wants us to feed on his word. And so we're to be people who partake of the word. And so we need to do that. So it's Wednesday. Let's have a Bible study. We've been working through the Gospel of John. We're in the second segment, uh, or technically the third segment of chapter 16. And so Jesus is explaining to his disciples things that are coming, and he really tells them this is the calm before the storm. Now, they, they've heard over and over again that he has to leave, that the Father sent him, that he's going to pay the penalty of sin, but he's going to leave. And last week, we looked at when he said, you're not even asking where I'm going. You ought to be excited about that. You ought to say, where are you going? And then Jesus says, I'm going to send you the paraclete, the Holy Spirit, the one who will come beside you to teach you and to lead you into all truth. And so again, the word is truth. God communicates through his word. When we pray, we speak to God. But when we read God's word, when we study God's word, God speaks to us. Now, uh, I want to just share a few quick thoughts because I know I, I spend too much time, but um, tomorrow's Thanksgiving, and maybe when you uh, view this, it'll be after Thanksgiving. But there's a lot of emotions that happen on a very special holiday, a day of celebration. Now, tomorrow, Thanksgiving Day, is a day to give thanks. Uh, the early settlers uh, gave thanks to God because they were alive and they had food to eat. Now, we are far beyond that. Uh, but we need to give thanks. But we also need to acknowledge that Thanksgiving is not always a day of celebration. Now, for many, everyone is gathered around the table. Everyone is in the house. There's a lot of food, and it's a lot of celebration, and it's euphoric. Uh, for some, there may be gathering around the table, but everyone may not be there. There may be a loved one who can't come home. They're in the military. Uh, maybe they're uh, on a, a trip and can't get back. Maybe they're uh, too far away to travel because of the expense or the time frame. And then there still may be somewhere out there uh, a hesitancy to travel uh, because of uh, the COVID virus. So there's a lot of reasons why someone may not be at the table. And that's hard breaking, isn't it? That's difficult. And so we're going to think about that in the Bible study, actually, because Jesus talks to us about how to deal with the storms of life, but maybe even more beyond that, maybe there's someone not here this year, someone you desperately love who's gone on to be with the Lord. And so this may be a very painful, painful day, this season of Thanksgiving, and we think we should be giving thanks, but our hearts hurt. 
And so I, I just want to acknowledge all those emotions. And maybe you're receiving this after Thanksgiving and you think back and say, wow, I felt that. And so listen to what God's word teaches us. And we're going to dig into God's word. And, you know, it helps us every day, all day, in all circumstances, even on days of great celebration. Well, today's Wednesday. It's time for the Bible study, The Calm Before the Storm, John 16, 16 through 33. Today is November 24th, 2021. So let's dig into God's word. Sadness will be turned to joy. Isn't that right? Uh, in the emotion wheelhouse that I was talking about, in a little while, you won't see me anymore. But a little while after that, you will see me again. Some of the disciples asked each other, what does he mean when he says, in a little while, you won't see me, but then you will see me, and I'm going to the Father. And what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand. Jesus realized they wanted to ask him about it, so he said, are you asking yourselves what I meant? I said in a little while, you won't see me. But a little while after that, you will see me again. I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me. But the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to a wonderful joy. It will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor. When her child is born, her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. So, you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice, and no one can rob you of that joy. At that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth, you will ask the Father directly, and he will grant your request because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name, and you will receive, and you will have abundant joy. I have spoken of these matters in figures of speech, but soon I will stop speaking figuratively and will tell you plainly all about the Father. Then you will ask in my name. I'm not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me and believe that I came from God. Yes, I came from the Father into the world, and now I will leave the world and return to the Father. Then his disciples said, At last, you are speaking plainly and not figuratively. Now we understand that you know everything, and there's no need to question you. From this we believe that you came from God. Jesus asked, Do you finally believe? But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when you will be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I'm not alone. Because the Father is with me. I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. Well, that's some encouraging scripture. In the midst of turmoil, chaos, struggle, Jesus is heading to the cross. He's been betrayed. He's promised that things will get better by the coming of the Holy Spirit. But now he is in a place, it is the calm before the storm. And so Jesus begins by saying, okay, this is what it's going to look like. This is what you're going to experience. It's all just a matter of time. And so as we begin our text, maybe you heard that and you wondered, okay, Jesus, what are you talking about? In a little while, you won't see me anymore. But a little while after that, you will see me again. Now, you know, we already know the story, don't we? We already know the whole gospel. We know what's about to take place and how it will end in a wonderful, uh, a wonderful resurrection story, right? But the disciples did not have that information yet. Here they are in this place of hearing Jesus saying, I'm going uh, and you won't see me. But then you'll see me again. And you know, I thought about that. Um, you know, as believers, 
if someone we love that loved the Lord has gone on to be with the Lord in heaven that is separated from us, isn't that the truth? We won't see them for a while, but then we'll see them again. And even though we may be scattered uh, all over the place, there will be days we will see each other again. So take heart in that. Don't be discouraged. Be encouraged. But it's all a matter of time, Jesus says. And so this is how time will play out. Gone today, here tomorrow. Now I know the actual phrase is here today, gone tomorrow. But Jesus says, okay, I'm leaving, but I'm coming back. And boy, that's a celebration just to think about. He says, you will see me again. And so the disciples say, I can't see what you're saying. Now I know we would think, I can't hear what you're saying. Uh, but my sons have told me, uh, Dad, it's not that your ears aren't working. It's that your brain isn't working. And you don't understand what we're saying. You hear uh, the words, but you don't see. You don't understand. And so the, the disciples go into this. Some of the disciples asked each other, what does he mean when he says, in a little while, you won't see me, but then you will see me. And I'm going to the Father. Now, what's really interesting here is they have heard so much of what Jesus has said, but they haven't processed it all. Now, Jesus did not say in verse 16 he was going to the Father, but previously he had said that multiple times, and so they're starting to process. He's going to the Father. What does that mean? And what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand. Well, don't we get in that boat a lot. We don't understand some of the things of God. But, Je but God, and through his son Jesus, wants us to grasp the things that he's saying. And so there are times when we don't understand, but we're going to find out how we can get the information we need. And you know, it's like, <laughs> Jesus loves to tell stories. Jesus uses common everyday occurrences. Uh, he talks about farming. He talks about different things that people understood. And so here, he uses the illustration of a woman giving birth to a child. And so he says, it will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor. When her child is born, her anguish gives way to joy because she brought a new baby into the world. So you sorrow now, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice and no one can rob you of that joy. Jesus says, and this whole idea of his living uh, the, the crucifixion and then the resurrection is really an imagery, a picture of birth. Uh, it's a celebration of a child being born. And so Jesus says, get that imagery in your mind. And yes, it is intense. There's great anguish. There's great pain. But when that baby's born, it is a celebration. It's a time of rejoicing. A new life has been brought into the world. Now, what's going to happen with Jesus? A new life is going to come into the world through the resurrection. Eternal life can be experienced by all through the gift of Jesus. And so Jesus says, hey, we're really talking about some celebration here. We're talking about joy, but you need to, you need to understand. I'm trying to communicate in words that you can get. It's difficult now. It's going to get better. There's going to be joy. Well, Jesus prepares us for the storms of life by offering us a clear picture, though illustrated, of what is to come and how it will affect us. So Jesus is saying, I want you to know what's coming and listen, the outcome should be joy. Well, extra help is available. Now, I really think this is the heart, the meat of the text when we hear about our greater connection with God. Now, we've been promised in the previous verses uh, of the coming of the Holy Spirit in chapter 16, the paraclete is coming. Help is available, but listen to how we connect with the help in verses 23 following. At that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth. You will ask the Father directly, and he will grant your request because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name, and you will receive, and you will have abundant joy. What's powerful here is Jesus says, you've never done this before. And you know, before I met Jesus, I'd never prayed in his name, not until I was told to cry out to him, to call out to Jesus. And then we read in scripture, and I remember reading that we should pray in Jesus' name, to ask the Father. And here Jesus says, 
How do you tap in to the help that's coming? He says, you go directly through to the Father, but you go through me. And so all of a sudden we see the whole Trinity at work here, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We're going to ask the Father in Jesus' name, and he's going to send us the help we need, and it's going to come through the Holy Spirit. But the outcome of asking is that we experience joy. In the midst of struggle, in the storms of life, we can experience joy. That's what our Lord wants for us. And so what does it look like? It's the transition of power. Now, not technically, uh, because we know God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit work in conjunction together. But Jesus says what you need to understand is right now for the disciples, they had been asking him here on earth for uh, understanding questions they had, and they could go to him uh, man to man, so to speak. And Jesus says, you know what, I'm going to be gone. You're not going to be able to do that. So you're going to go directly to the Father. And so in a sense, it's a, it's a transition of power uh, from this earthly understanding of communicating with Jesus to the heavenly understanding of tapping in to the source, the power of God himself, the Father. Well, security clearance is given, and Jesus says, this is how you get in the door. This is the security code. This is the password to get in. It's my my name. Jesus says, if you ask in my name, you will receive everything the Father has for you. You will receive and you will have abundant joy. And that's what the Father wants for us. I've spoken of these matters in figures of speech, but soon I will stop speaking figuratively and will tell you plainly all about the Father. Then you will ask in my name, verse 26, I'm not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf, for the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me and believe that I came from God. Yes, I came from the Father into the world, and now I will leave the world and return to the Father. What's really exciting here, here we go, is Jesus says, uh, and it's really who you know. Jesus says, you know me. Now listen, God the Father loves you, and listen, if you're hearing this, God the Father loves you. You are loved eternally. You are loved and never feel unloved. Only the enemy of our souls wants us to feel unloved. But we are loved by the living God, and Jesus says, you now have greater access because you love me. I'm going to the Father, and I will communicate, but listen, when you're asking in my name, you're receiving from the Father because he loves you. And because you love me, you've entered into this amazing relationship. And you know, that's really what it's all about. Jesus offers us help in the storms of life by clarifying the relationship of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as our relationship with God, which comes through prayer. When we ask, we enter into this relationship. We're in the love of the Father. We are loving the Son. We are receiving the joy that God has for us. Well, and the storm may be weathered. Now, that's kind of the exciting part of the text. Uh, it, it, the, the conclusion of this text is overwhelmingly powerful. In the middle, though, was that crux of the text where we can ask the Father, and He will help us. He will send us aid. He will send us joy. But now we know, okay, we're in the storm, but we can survive. So what does that look like? Verse 29 then his disciples at last said, at last, you speak plainly and not figuratively. Now we understand that you know everything and there's no need to question you for from this, we believe that you came from God. Oh, wow. We get it all. Well, it's clearing up cloudy and going to come a dry drizzle. Uh, that was something my dad used to tell me every time I asked about the weather. <laughs> and really, that's where the, the disciples are. It, it's going to clear up cloudy and come a dry drizzle because they think they know. They think they understand. They think they grasp all the things of God here. And so we know that constantly, and Jesus has already told Peter, listen, you're going to deny me. Judas betrayed me. You're going to deny me. Listen, <laughs> it's all going to fall apart. But the disciples can't grasp that yet. And, and again, we are way ahead of them in understanding. But at this point, they're saying, yeah, we get it. We get it. And isn't that where we are even today? We think we get it. We think we understand the things of God. But listen, we've got to keep growing. We've got to keep learning. We've got to keep moving forward because 
the National Weather Service, <laughs> you know when you hit that button on that little weather uh, radio and you hear the warnings coming, right? Uh, you can hear about a tornado in the area. You can hear about a big storm coming through, flash floods, some kind of wintry uh, weather mix that's coming. Something dangerous is coming. Well, why do I say that? And Jesus said, do you finally believe? But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when you will be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Jesus said there's a big storm coming. Now listen, you think you're ready. You're not ready yet. But I'm telling you, it's okay. There's a big storm coming. I need you to understand that. And then he says, you leave me alone, yet I am not alone. The Father is with me. And so we hear this tremendous warning about being scattered, about everything falling apart. But Jesus says, you know what? I have peace. He, he could sleep on a boat in the middle of a storm and the disciples cried out, Lord, do you not care? We're perishing. And Jesus said, oh, ye of little faith. Listen, aren't we like that when the storm clouds come and, and we hear the National Weather Service saying things are going to be bad. We can panic and we go get milk and bread. I don't know why. But we, we're overwhelmed. And in the midst of all that, Jesus says, I'm not alone. The Father is with me. He's communicating what we really need to get. But ultimately, he says, clear skies ahead for all who trust me. He says, I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Now, the key operative words we heard in the first two segments that we studied tonight or today were joy. Joy was coming it, when we when we find the Father, when we seek the Father. He is constantly sending joy to us, and uh, we get to experience joy by praying to the Father in Jesus' name. He will send us. We will receive an abundance of joy, abundant joy, and now. After all this joy has been communicated, even though there's going to be a scattering, he says you can have peace. Yes, there's chaos in the world. Things are not the way we want them to be. Uh, maybe on Thanksgiving Day, things were not the way you wanted them to be. But you know what? You can still have joy. You can still have peace, the peace that comes from God through his son. And he says, listen, <clears throat> yeah, there's trouble. There's struggles. But listen, I've overcome all that. And so he says, I'm setting before you an example. Yes, difficult days. Find peace in me. I found peace in the Father. And I've overcome the world. I've overcome the struggle, the enemy. And so he could move forward as the Father would have him. Well, Jesus not only certifies the coming of the storms, but offers assurance that we will survive because he is in control. Well, the calm before the storm is a kind warning to prepare before it's too late. Jesus knew what was to come and how to prepare those that loved him for it. At the core of his warning is the promise of a relationship that offers more than assistance, but total provision. Jesus is our shelter in the storm. All we have to do is ask. He weathered the storm of eternity so that we also may make it safely through. Trials and sorrows are the forecast before us, but clear skies are coming. In the meantime, he offers us joy for the struggle, and nothing may take him from us. Ultimately, it's our relationship with him, the connection with him and the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit that brings joy and peace, and he cannot be taken from us. Well, let's pray, and then we're going to receive a blessing. Let's pray together. Father, we've just read, in your word, that if we would ask in Jesus' name that we could receive joy and that we could receive peace. And Lord, we would say so often, we don't have a lot of joy. The struggle is overwhelming and there is no peace to be found. But Lord, we have found peace in you and we're grateful that you made us these promises that if we would ask the Father directly in your name, that he would work to give us great provision, to give us all that we need. And ultimately, it's a relationship with you. And so, Lord, as we connect, 
uh, between the Father and the Son through the Holy Spirit, would you allow us to experience that great joy? And Lord, maybe there's just some difficult days right now for many of my friends. I pray right now as they cry out to you, as they pray, as they ask for your care and your kindness, that you would exchange their pain and struggle for the joy that comes from you and you alone. And may that be uh, given through an overwhelming peace that truly understands that, God, you are in control, and we're not. But, Jesus, we hear again, you've overcome the world. And so we trust in you, and we celebrate that. For it's in your precious name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, hey, if you prayed, we just prayed according to the Bible. The Bible said, ask the Father in Jesus' name, and we would receive from him. All we had to do was ask. Well, that's good news. Be encouraged. Here's the blessing. The blessing, 1 Peter 5, 8 through 11. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same kind of suffering you are. In his kindness, God called you to share in his eternal glory by means of Christ Jesus. So after you've suffered a little while, he will restore, support, and strengthen you, and he will place you on a firm foundation. All power to him forever. Amen and amen. Remember, he overcame the world, and we overcome through him alone.